Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? So uh, this guy made a comment in the Discord that he wanted a state machine tutorial. Okay, so a state is when something is doing something, and something could be doing nothing. You could just be sitting there doing nothing. And uh, when you're in a state, you'll do something for some time, and then you'll uh, stop doing it because of some reason. So, like, let's look at an example. Uh, I'm fast asleep, right? And it's 7 a.m., and I got to go up and go to class, so my alarm clock goes off. And uh, this is me over here, and I'm not very happy. So I hit the snooze, and I go back into the sleep state. And we do this until we get into the, you know, when it's 8 o'clock, and I really got to get up and go to class. Let's look at a code example, though. So there's two states, sleep and awake. And you'll notice that there's a complete function definition. Definition. And so when a state is completed, it does some stuff and then it returns the state that it should move into next. So as you can see, when we complete the sleep state, we'll ring the alarm clock and then we'll wake up. And when we're in the awake state, we're going to be awake for five minutes and then we're going to complete the awake function and we're going to snooze. We're going to snooze for 10 and then we're going to go to the sleep state. And the sleep state is set to duration zero. That means that we're going to sleep as long as we want until something pulls us out of sleep. So you can see that I define the states and then I go to the awake state and that's kind of the way that we'll move around the state machine. All right, let's open up studio and write this. Okay, so I'm here in a new place and I'm just going to make a new script. And since every state machine is unique, this is going to be a class definition. So I'm going to write up a simple class constructor first. Okay, so I've quickly written the class implementation here and I've defined what I'm going to expect of a state. So we have this completed method that gets fired when the state is completed. And we have the enter method when the um, a current state is trying to move into another state. And this will validate whether we're allowed to move into the state. So like if we're asleep, we shouldn't be able to move into the eating breakfast state because we're not awake. So first what we need to do is define our states. Okay, so what I've quickly done is written a function that goes through and it'll just add each state to the states table. And we're going to say that, that the current state is just going to be the first state in the list. That's the initial state. Okay, so the next thing I want to write is the go to function. And so this is when we want to transfer from one state to the other. So in the example, I'm going to use that example code. And the idea is that we're going to go from the um, sleep state into the awake state. Okay, so I've quickly written up the go to function here. So we pass in a state name and we store the old state name here. We get the old state and the next state. If there's not a next state, then we won't do anything. Um, and we check here if the transition's valid. So if the next state has an enter method that we need to check, we'll check it and we'll overwrite the valid to whatever this enter method is. If not, then valid stays true and we'll set the current state to this new state name and we'll play the completed for the old state. Okay, so the last thing I need to add is the advancement of time in the state machine. So the state machine doesn't work if we don't update it over time and the states don't iterate through their length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an update function. We're going to have a start time and a duration, and we're going to repetitively compare if the duration plus, if start time plus now is longer than the duration, then the state should be over. If there is a duration, then we'll set the new state's duration to the duration that we're tracking in the state machine. Okay, so I've written out what the update function does here. And so if we have no duration, then we're going to return because this is a state that we want to sit in. If there isn't a current state, then we're going to return. Otherwise, we're going to get the current time and we're going to get the elapsed time, actually, is what I should call this. And if the elapsed time is less than the duration of the state, we're just going to return. We're going to quit out of this update function. Otherwise, we're going to get the current state. And if this current state has a completed method, we're going to fire that because we're assuming that the completed method is where we're going to transition into new states. Otherwise, we're going to go to the same state. Okay, so I've written a simple test script here. Okay, so here with the code I've written. So I had to adjust the code here because I realized that the sleep state is never going to end with a duration of zero. So we have to go to the awake state and it's going to say snoozing let's sleep and it's going to jump us back into the sleep state. So if we run, it should be sleep for about 100, awake for about 180 and then snoozing, and then we're back asleep. And now it's trapped still in this sleep state. So this is great and all, but we can't really do anything with this because we can only do stuff at the end of a transition. So what I'd like to add is another method inside of each state that, that allows us to do something whenever we transition into a state. So I'll add a start method to each state. So these start functions are just going to be um, performing actions, and they're not going to be acting back on the state machine itself. It's only going to be in these completed functions here. So let's write something that activates these started functions functions whenever we go into a new state. Since the way it's written, we either complete and go into a new state or we go to into another state. So everything passes in through go to. 
So what we should say is in here, if we have a valid state, call next state dot started. So you can see this only happens when we transition states. So let's look at the output and see if it matched what we're expecting here. We can see that we sit in the sleep state for a while and for about two seconds, and then we jump into the awake state where it says, I'm awake when it starts. And then we sit in the awake state for about three seconds, which is, should be 180 sixtieths of a second. And then it'll say snoozing, let's sleep at the end of the state, and it transitions into sleep. And when sleep starts, it'll print ZZZ. Okay, so I've made a tool script and I've created this little part here. And a behavior I want to define is that we're gonna start with, um, an idle state. And when we click, we're going to go into, we're going to color change here. Event here is a click. And then I want to sit in a, in a cool down state. And then immediately once that's over, I want to go back into the idle state. So I'm going to define two states. We're going to have idle as the first, cool down as the second. Click, we're going to set the state machine to cool down. So it'll transition from idle to cool down. And then uh, the color change will happen in the transition. And then after the cooldown ends, we'll go into idle. And so this will put into the put into action the enter function that I described, where we make sure that we're in a good state. So I've quickly modified it here where when we enter the state, we make sure we only transition if the old state is idle. Otherwise, when the state is started, we change the brick color of the handle. And when it's completed, we go back into the idle state. So if we play, should be able to pull it out, click, and it'll change color. And we'll see that we're in the cooldown state. And then after three seconds, we're back into the idle state. And we can sit here for as long as we want. And we can click and it'll change it. And I can spam here and it won't do anything. And if I spam click here, we'll see that we're only changing colors every three seconds, no matter how fast I click because it's not letting us do anything when we leave those states. Okay, so quickly let's review the state machine that we wrote. So I defined a state as such. It has a name, a duration, a completed function, a started function, and an enter function. We define a state machine and set the index to state machine so we can make it a class. We create a new state machine. Defining the states just sets all of the, um, the state table to the name being the state. And the current state is the first of the states that we put in. When we go to a state, we get the old state name, the old state, and the next state. If it's a valid transition, which we check through the enter function, we'll uh, continue. And we will set the current state to the state name. And we'll set the duration to the duration of the next state. And we'll set the start time of this state to the universal uh, server time. And then if there's a started method, we'll call it. When we update the state machine, um, if the duration is zero, we're not going to do anything. If there isn't a current state, we're not going to do anything. Otherwise, we'll get the time now and we'll see what the elapsed time is. And if it's not greater than the duration of the current state, we won't do anything. But if it is, that means we need to transition. If the current state has a completed event, which handles transitioning logic, then we'll do that. Otherwise, we'll go to the current state. Okay, so very quickly here, I've realized that I want to change it so that the completed method returns the name of the state that we want to transition into. I somewhat prefer this because it relies that the user completely specifies all cases um, when the state is completed. So if you go into an if statement and the player returns a nil state, you're going to realize because that's not a defined state. So I think this behavior is going to be better because uh, players are going to be, or you guys are going to be more aware of what states you're transitioning to and from. So to re-review here on the update function, if the current state has a completed event, we'll get the next state by executing that completed method. If that state exists, we'll go to that state. Otherwise, we'll warn that that state doesn't exist and stay in the current state. Okay, so taking a look at the game that I've been working on on stream, I stream on YouTube now and then, uh, tune in if you want. You'll see down here that I actually use the state machine for a gun. So there's the idle state where you're holding it and nothing's happening. There's a shoot state, which has the duration of one over the fire rate. And then there's a reload state, which will perform a reload on the gun. So if we look over each of these states, we'll see that if we ever get into the idle state, it'll reset the spread. Uh, whenever we shoot, if we're alive and we're not reloading, then we can enter this state. Um, when at the start of the state, we'll see if there's ammo. If there isn't ammo, it'll shoot empty, which just plays a little empty sound. Otherwise, we'll shoot. And then if there's um, <clears throat> on the completion of the state here, and this is using an old version of the state machine, so it doesn't use the return, but it sets it to the shoot state or it sets it to the idle state.
On the reload state, if we're not reloading, the gun is somewhat empty and we have reserve ammo, it's going to enter the reload state. Otherwise, it's just going to sit in that idle state and reloading performs the reload state and when we're done, we go into idle. So if I was to draw this state diagram out, it looks something like this where we have our idle state here and our idle state can go into our uh, shoot state and this can be repeated and then we have a reload state here, which we can also go into from the idle state. So if we're shooting and we have the key pressed down still, we're going to keep going into the shooting state. And if we have ammo too, we're going to stay in this state. Otherwise, the shoot is going to go back into the idle state here. And then if we're in the idle state and we press the, press the R key, we're going to go in the reload state. And we're going to sit in this state. And then it's going to chuck you back into the idle state. And so this performs an animation and this performs some effects. So let's hop in the game and see it in action. Okay, so if I pull up my gun here, you can see that right now we're in the idle state. This is what I call the idle state. If I click, we'll go into the shoot state. And if I click and hold, we'll keep going in the shoot state and stuff will keep happening. Now, what I can do here is I can push R to go into the reload state. And I'm going to keep clicking here. And I'm going to push R, but you'll notice I have no more ammo. So it won't transition into the reload state, it'll just stay in this shoot state. I'd like to mention that I now have memberships on my channel, so if you want to support, um, go hop on those memberships. This suggestion was dropped in the Discord, and if you want to make a suggestion like it and get your suggestion featured, drop it in there. Uh, come join up. I probably won't upload next week because I'm about to go on spring break. Uh, otherwise, hope everybody has a good day. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks. See you guys. Have a good day.